What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we see the Dow Jones leading the way higher so we now have the full bull trends in the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. Is the tech sector being a laggard or is it going to be a lot weaker as we continue through the summer? First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So today on SPY, we basically went absolutely nowhere going down 0.27% and we did ping pong between strong support at 445 and that strong resistance right around 450. So remember with SPY, we do have the full bull trend for two days in a row now and you can see that 20 simple moving average is very aggressively sloping and the price action is continuing to close above that aggressively sloping 20 simple moving average. So even though we are in this pullback mode, this is still bullish price action because we're not slicing down through our critical support level. So as long as SPY is above 443 to 444, I do think that's incredibly bullish, but we will see the market getting a lot weaker if we see SPY breaking down below 443. So the most critical support levels at this point will be 445 and 443. And yes, you could throw 444 in there as well. So you basically have a support every dollar lower once you get to 445. Below 443, we are getting a lot weaker and this is going to lose the bull trend. So I do think that's where you should be setting a risk for long trades. And I do think you should be bullish as long as SPY is above that level. Now, in the event we do break down below 443, we have very strong support at 438. And below 438, this is likely not going to be a bull market. And we're just going to chop around and consolidate until we see whether or not we go back into a bear market. So you're only staying bullish right now in the short term above 443. And you're getting a lot more cautious as we come down to that support level at 438. There's no other way to put it. It's that simple. So don't overthink it. We're getting a lot more bullish if SPY breaks above 450 and confirmation we're back in the full bull market will be when SPY breaks out above 462 with strong resistance right around 458 on the way. Above 462, we're going to be talking about all-time highs, but right now we shouldn't be talking about all-time highs until we see price action breaking above that critical resistance. So this chart is looking incredibly bullish and this is with the tech sell-off today. So the S&P 500 holding up and holding onto the bull trend, holding above support while the tech sector is selling off is extremely bullish because the tech sector is over 30% of the weight in the S&P 500 and that still didn't allow the S&P 500 to break down through support. So this is going to be bullish no matter how you look at it when SPY is above 443 and there's no other way to put it. So we'll leave it at that and we'll continue to watch that very critical support. Jumping over to the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, you can see where all of the weakness came in today with the triple Qs dropping 1.4% and coming back down to test yesterday's low right around 348. So we are starting to break down through some critical support. We had that very strong support level right around 354 to 352 and we are closing below it. So the next strongest support level will be 347 and that level needs to hold up. Otherwise, this chart will be looking a lot more bearish and we more than likely will start developing a bear trend. For the time being, we do have a positively sloping 20 simple moving average. So the triple Q's bulls really need to get back above 354 and go up there and close this gap at 360 sooner rather than later because the bears will use that as a reason to start shorting this market. So in order for the tech sector to look stronger, we need to see the triple Q's back above 355 and start closing back above 360. And we will be getting a lot more bearish on the triple Q's below 347, even though we do have strong support at 340. Below 340, we're likely going to continue the bear market because remember the triple Qs did officially enter a bear market because we did have that full 20% or more drawdown from the high to the low. So the triple Qs are only bullish above 347, so you have a very well-defined risk level and we're getting a lot more bullish above 367 and 372. We still do have that valid price target at 377, but it's less likely we're going to hit that price target if we start closing below 347. So for the time being, while the triple Qs are above 347, you still do have a price target at 377 that you can set a great risk reward trade setup off 347 or 340 all the way back up to 377. Also take note that this was extremely low volume selling even though we did drop 1.4% today, we did not even exceed yesterday's low volume. So when you see low volume selling, you don't want to get overly bearish because you need to see high volume selling to start slicing through support. Remember by nature markets tend to go up so you can go up on low volume absolutely no problems. Anybody who tells you going up on low volume is bearish is absolutely wrong. Just go back test it if you don't believe me. Low volume buying is known as a melt up and the majority of bull markets are usually going to be in a melt up mode so you're not going to see that high volume buying. You need to see high volume selling to slice through 347 so continue to watch the volume very closely. 
If you start to see high volume selling and we slice down through 347, then you can start getting a lot more bearish. On the Dow Jones, we could see the Dow Jones leading the way higher, going up 0.4%, and we have an incredibly bullish looking chart on the Dow Jones. Price action is back above all the moving averages, and we did regain the full bull trend today. So with the Dow Jones, you can see we're going up on incredibly low volume, but we do have a bullish chart, and the next bullish breakout will be the close above 352 to 353, with price targets at 356, and don't forget we do have that gap close at 360. With the full bull trend and bullish price action, there is no reason right now to not believe the Dow Jones is going to get the bullish breakout and go close the gap at 360. If you think the Dow Jones is going to 360 and the triple Qs are going back into a bear market, well, that's your opinion, but I don't see any way the Dow Jones is going higher and the triple Qs is going to slice through support. So I am using the Dow Jones as a leading indicator at this moment in time that the rest of the market is just lagging behind in the tech sector and it's about to catch up. Strong support in the Dow Jones is at 345 and we're bullish above 340. And if the Dow Jones starts breaking below 340, we're getting a lot more bearish because we're more than likely going back into a bear trend. On the IWM small caps, we were down 0.8% today and we're still testing this very critical support right around 197 to 198. Below this support, we're very likely quickly filling the gap at 195.7 and that should be another strong support. However, if we lose that support level, we need to see IWM holding up above 193 or very likely going to continue the bear market in the small caps and start trending down towards 170. The bullish breakouts from here will be the gap close above 203, closing back above the 50 EMA at 204, and then getting back above 207 and then 212. We should be bullish above 212, so if you want to wait for confirmation, just wait until IWM gets above that level, and then we should have a nice bull rally that can take us up to close the gap at 228. On the ARK ETF, we were down over 3.2% and we did retest yesterday's low. And so far, it looks like the ARK ETF is still in that bear market because we still have the bear trend and we clearly are getting rejected at resistance. Price actions below all the moving averages, so we're very likely coming down to fill the gap at 54.7, but we do have a gap to the upside as well at 66. So you're getting a lot more bullish on ARK on a close above 71 with strong resistance right around 66 to 67 and the 50 EMA right around 69. There's no reason to be bullish on this ETF until it starts closing above 71. So continue to short at resistance and look for downside price targets. On the VIX, we were down 1.81% today and we continue to see the VIX getting absolutely crushed every time it tries to break out. And this is the third day in a row the VIX cannot break out and get to 24. The VIX is closing at 21, still in the bear trend, and it definitely looks like it's trending down. So the next time the VIX closes below 20, that will be very bullish, and we more than likely will be in sustainable bull rallies the next time the VIX closes below 20. The next bullish breakout for the VIX will be the close below 18, and you're getting a lot more cautious and a lot more bearish if we start seeing the VIX closing above 24. On Bitcoin, we're currently down 1.8%, and we see Bitcoin is starting to lose this support level at 43,000, but we still do have this last line of defense for the bulls at 42,000. Right now, be getting a lot more cautious, but as long as we hold up above support at 42,000, we still do have that valid price target up here at 52,000. Below 42,000, you could throw the price target in the trash can because we're more than likely going back down to retest support at 37,000. So this is a do or die support level for the Bitcoin bulls. So watch 42 and 43,000 very closely. We're getting a lot more bullish above 45,000 and then the breakout back above 48,000. So those will be your most critical resistance levels with the resistance trend line right around 46,000. On NVIDIA stock, we were down 4.5% today and we see NVIDIA is very close to closing the gap at 230. However, we did not fully close that gap just yet. I do think at this point, it's a no brainer that gap is fully going to close before we start bouncing and testing the resistance and the gap close at 258. So from here, this is a great risk reward setup because we're filling the gap at 230 with strong support at 223 for the opportunity to come all the way back up to 254 to 258, which are going to be very critical resistance. From here, we're losing the bull trend and we're testing critical support. So if we start breaking down below 230, you're looking for support at 223 and 209. And 209 has been a very strong support level. So that will be a very good opportunity to take another long trade. However, don't get too bullish while we're below all the moving averages and building up a bear trend. So wait to get overly bullish until we get back above 256. We have resistance at 244 and we're bullish above 256. And the next time we break above 256, we're more than likely going to start going back into a bull market, but we won't know for sure until we break out above 267 and then right around 278. So watch these very critical levels and pay attention to this very critical support and gap fill at 230. On Tesla stock, we were down 3% today and we are getting a little bit of a retest of the gap close right around 1021. So as long as that support level does hold up, it's more than likely we're going to bounce off the support and try to make that breakout to form new all-time highs this year. 
We have that gap to fill at 1087 and we still have strong support at 1021 and our 20 simple moving average is very aggressively upward sloping. So we now have strong support at 996 and we still have strong support at 965. So as long as we're above these support levels with the bull trend and the high volume bullish price action, I want you to stay bullish on Tesla. Critical resistance will be 1065, 1087, 1108 and the bullish breakout will be a close above 1150. On Apple stock, we were down 1.19% today and Apple stock did come back down to test that very critical support level, which is right around 169. It's still possible we come all the way down to test 168, but as you can tell, Apple stock does have the full bull trend and so far it is bouncing off of 169. Our 20 simple moving average is very aggressively upward sloping. We have the bull trend and we're holding above support and we still have a gap to fill all the way up here at 174. So at the very minimum, I would expect to see Apple fill that gap at 174, but with the bull trend and the bullish price action and the high volume buying, we're more than likely heading up to a brand new all-time high at my price target at 188. So we will have resistance on the way there at 176, 179, and then 182. If we start breaking down below 168, we can get a lot more cautious because we're more than likely going to see a deeper correction. But as long as Apple is above 168 and has the bull trend, it's very bullish and it's more than likely trending higher. On the financial sector, we were up 1% today and we see the financials are starting to bounce off of the support as we go into next week where we're going to have all of the bank earnings. We're a lot more bullish above the 50 EMA and we're a lot more bearish if we break below support. On the industrials, we were down 0.56% today and we see the industrials still struggling with the price action closing below all the moving averages. So we can't get bullish until we get back over the 50 EMA and then we can start looking for the gap close at 106. On the healthcare sector, we're up 0.6% today and we still see the healthcare sector looking incredibly bullish with high volume buying and we're breaking out to a brand new all-time high with a very strong bull trend. At this point, there's no reason to believe the healthcare sector isn't going to continue to trend higher, which is very bullish for the S&P 500. The energy sector was up 2.75% today and is at a brand new closing 52 week high with the bull trend still intact and we're still holding up above the support trend line. It looks like at this point in time, this energy sector is not ready to roll over and die. So stay bullish as long as we're above support and above the 20 simple moving average. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, you can see this is a very doji looking candlestick today, but we do have a very bullish setup as long as SPY is above 443 and we still have the bull trend. Look for the tech sector to be the laggards as they definitely were looking very weak today, but that can all change in the drop of a hat. So watch the price action and watch those critical levels. Remember to stay objective and follow the price action because there's nothing the price action is going to tell you that is going to deceive you. Price action cannot lie to you and as long as you know your critical levels and which levels are bearish and which levels are bullish, you should have no trouble navigating this market from here. Also, don't forget that I do have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm driven trade alert service that only trades the ETF TQQ and sends all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. With all of this market volatility, I think now is the best time to be a bank member. You can find out all of the information and learn how to subscribe by clicking on the link in the description of the video. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I'm doing intraday updates and analysis and bringing new trade ideas to you weekly, and there is a ton of brand new trade ideas right now. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, you can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link below. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.